Today we'll show you how skydiving can be done indoors. And there's a sorority on campus who's fundraising to take Alzheimer's head on. Broadcasting from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Studio G is starting right now. Welcome to Studio G. I'm Deshello Balogan. And I'm Sarah Shelton. After hearing about cancerous meat last week, meat continues to get a bad reputation. Over 167,000 pounds of ground meat is being recalled for possible E. coli contamination. The major meat packing company based in Omaha, Nebraska, All American Meats, failed the USDA E. coli test. The USDA encourages consumers who have purchased the meat to not eat it, either throw it away or return it to the original store it was purchased from. The Nevada Treasurer's Office has started prepaid college enrollment. The program allows families to pay for the tuition of Nevada universities in advance. As a result, they are not affected by tuition hikes once they pay for the credits. They don't need to pay an extra money, any extra money if the university decides to raise the cost of tuition. Families will be able to pay in large quantities or regular intervals. This program can comfort families who are concerned with getting their children into a university without financial burdens. New York City's 45-year-old marathon had its biggest turnout last weekend, and Sarah Shelton was there in New York during the action. The New York City Marathon takes place every year with thousands of runners from across the world. Everyone has a different story for why they race, but the support from the runners' families and friends could be seen from Central Park to York Avenue, where I spoke to one family who was out supporting their wife and mother. What are you doing here at the race? <laughs> You're watching oh. Justin has supported his wife in the race since he met her and is happy with the turnout. How often is the race held? Every year. So every year the race is held and how many people participate do you know? I think this was over 50,000. I think 56,000 or so is the number I heard. So supposed to be the, uh, the biggest one ever. The race was created by Fred LeBow in 1970, and just before the 21st anniversary, Fred was diagnosed with cancer. This led many people to join the race and support runners who have a disability or illness and are running to help and spread awareness for different causes. I'm here because my grandmother is running. She's 74, so uh, she should be here soon, and we'll be here to cheer on at Fred's team. Runners pass through all parts of the city, including over Queensboro Bridge and through neighborhoods. No matter the weather, the event always shows great community spirit. For Studio G, I'm Sarah Shelton. This year, the race had a record number of finishers, topping last year's total of 50,000. Proceeds from race in entries and donations go towards charities partnered with the TCS New York City Marathon. If you didn't know, homecoming is this week, and there's been, a, there, there's been events happening around campus. Jordan Lorenzo was there for yesterday's homecoming activities. I'm here at Northfield for a Rebel Fest for UNLV's homecoming. Well, we're with the Rebels of UNLV. It's also about the rivalry between those who participate in Greek life. I talked to one sorority that enjoys the friendly competition. We've been working on this for a few weeks. Our theme for homecoming is Spongebob. They have competitions going on every day this week, all the way up until Saturday. But today, it's, they had to just make carnival games and then bring it out, bring prizes for people to play. Just to kind of bring the whole campus together and play and just enjoy the day. When they win, everyone gets to go on the um, field at halftime on Saturday during the football game. And then whoever wins gets presented their trophy. Homecoming is a really big tradition here at UNLV and being that a lot of people think UNLV is a commuter campus, homecoming is a really good time to kind of get that campus life feeling to it and really bring the whole campus together. The homecoming festivities continue today with more campus activities and a step show later on tonight. Take this week to get involved and show your school spirit as well as watch it all here. For Studio G, I'm Jordan Lorenzo. 
Tonight for Homecoming Week, we have a step show. Tune in tomorrow to get the inside scoop of the performance. So how was New York? I had the best time of my life. Um, I went with another reporter here, and we had so much fun covering the marathon. We actually stayed about one block away from where the marathon's main street was. Really? So it was crazy. You had to walk 20 blocks just to be able to cross the street to get to, like, um, a subway or uh, any anything, actually. It, the cent Central Park was packed. It was wonderful. And the weather was so nice. I'm going to have to check it out because I really want to go to New York. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. Well, after the break, there's a local clothing store whose main objective is to donate clothing. Along with a sorority whose philanthropy is taking on one of the deadliest diseases. We'll be right back. Metropolis is a 30-minute show that airs every Tuesday evening at 91.5. You're going to hear Dr. Gary Larson along with our regular contributors talking about what matters to our community. And not only what matters, but why does it matter. We look at our community as a whole, but we also pay special attention to what's happening here at UNLV because that's our home as well. So looking at our Metropolis through the lens of a radio show really gives us the unique perspective to tell a story, tell a story through words and through people, and I think it makes for a great program. What are the Music Mondays? Rap, hip hop, R&B too. I like to play like any new upcoming music, new albums, new mixtapes. I like to open up with maybe kind of like a hype song that gives people energy. Just play any type of good music and then give people like a rundown of what's going on currently in hip hop. Just good vibes, good music. A lot of radio stations don't keep up with playing good music. So, that's really the goal. This is Jalen Young on More Than Music Mondays. Check me out on the Rebel HD2. As far as Studio G, at first it looks overwhelming. And at first it looks like it's a lot of work. But I'll tell you what, it's the most beneficial class I've had at UNLV to date, without a doubt. You get to not only develop stories and work on your interviewing skills, your editing skills and your shooting skills from a camera perspective, you get to work on all the equipment that's in the studio. So you're working on audio, you're working on directing, tech directing, you get to produce your own show. You can take a 30 minute newscast and make it your own. And that's really cool about Studio G. Like I said, a lot of it seems overwhelming at first, but it is by far the best class I've taken at UNLV since I've been here. Sigma Kappa is a sorority here at UNLV raising money to help the elderly. Reporter Sally Ann Ficarata was there to get the story. We try to do creative things every year um, so that we're not just always doing the same, like come buy cookies and give us money. <laughs> Sigma Kappa sorority held a fundraising event this past week called Doggy Day with Sigma K. We think it's responding pretty well. Kids walking to and from class are going to drop a dollar in, take a picture with, their do with the dog. The event was geared toward raising money for Alzheimer's and Sigma K's other four philanthropies. All of our philanthropies are pretty important to us. Like the Alzheimer's Association is really close to a lot of our sisters' hearts. Um, last weekend we participated in the Alzheimer's Walk at Town Square. Um, gerontology kind of goes hand in hand with Alzheimer's. Inherit the Earth is something that is kind of influencing green initiatives like throughout the Earth. So we're trying to like make the Earth cleaner place. We also donate to like the uh, study of the brain to see like where Alzheimer's starts and how and all that stuff. So that's called gerontology and that's um, something that not many people know about. For gerontology research, Sigma Kappa sends the money to an all-women staff of researchers. And it's really awesome because we're not only empowering other sisters, so like other women, but we're also empowering um, people who are you know struck by this disease you know, so that they can keep working with their family and keep living and have a good life. Sigma Kappa wants college students to be aware that Alzheimer's is a disease that not only affects older people, but younger people as well. It can happen at any age, so it's really important to start um, looking for a cure today so that we can save the memories that we're creating in, in college. You know, we're here to have fun, we're here to make memories. Um, we want to keep those memories. From Studio G, I'm Sally Ann Ficarata. Sororities aren't all about making friends and attending social events. They do a lot to help out the community. Located in the Arts District of Las Vegas, Buffalo Exchange is a store that combines shopping and giving back to the local Vegas community. Um, the whole concept behind Buffalo Exchange was Kristen really loved to thrift, so she wanted to create a store where everything was already picked out for you. So what they do is they bring in a bag of their clothing, they bring it up to our buy counter, uh, we would go through it. If we find something to sell, we price an item, to, what we price the item to retail for, you get 30% cash or 50% store trade. We 
stopped producing or we stopped giving the option of them just taking a bag and we started giving them the option of a token as well, which equals five cents to make a bag. So each store has three local nonprofit charities that you're able to donate to. Um, and on the way out, you can donate to whichever charity you would like. We have the center. Um, they support the LBGTQ community. Um, we have an animal sanctuary that's a no-kill animal sanctuary where animals are taken to and they will rehabilitate and take care of them. And then Purple Wings. They help um, girls off of streets of poverty. We rotate them every six months. We pick um, three charities. Uh, sometimes this is a staff involvement or um, somebody from our management team will do some research and we will select a few that we think um, would be good options. When you come in and sell, if there's items that we do not take, you are able to donate them to a basket. We donate to four nonprofit local charities, um, Safe Nest, Big Brother, Big Sister, and a couple other that are involved with the homeless. During the winter months, Buffalo Exchange will be accepting fur coat donations as part of their Coats for Cubs event. The jackets will be turned into beds for animals that are being rehabilitated. Up next, Sally Ann Fricarada will be sitting down with a special guest. And Deshola went skydiving. We'll be right back after these short messages. You don't get to do an internship, you have to do an internship. It's one of the requirements for a journalism major, so you have to do an internship when, uh, before you can graduate. Definitely having an internship as a requirement really helps push yourself out there and to like just remind you that you know that your graduation is coming up soon, you're going to have to need some workforce, work experience in your career. So um, it's really good to put yourself out there early on and they tend to help students a lot more. So when you do a student internship, it really helps out a lot. Ever wonder what makes us, the Smurfs, so happy? The forest, of course. This is where we, along with the beautiful forest creatures, make our home with beautiful plant life, clean water, and endless adventures. Day. It's a place to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. So discover the forest with your family today. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Your community's farmer's market. Welcoming. Lively. Friendly. A place where neighbors and friends come together to celebrate their community. With over 50 vendors, organic, sustainable, fresh produce are available just for you. Support and buy local at Fresh 52. If you've ever thought about skydiving but you're too scared, there's another option that might be a great alternative for you. I have the story. Tricked into this one. <laughs> in 1982, Vegas Indoor Skydiving became the first indoor skydiving facility in the United States and has been raising people to the roof ever since. The wind speeds are about 110 miles per hour. There's a 13 foot diameter wind stream and then two feet of pads beyond that. So you can fly in the middle and then you fall out when you're done flying. We are going to learn how to skydive. Uh, sometimes I move your arms, but I grab your wrists and just relocate it if I need to do that. We want to make sure everybody's safe. So we do one flyer at a time, and the rest stand in the pads and dodge flyers that are falling out if they have to. But usually we keep it controlled and try and make sure everybody lands somewhere on purpose. When they first see it, I think they don't think much of it. But then once they're in the tunnel, they realize it's actually sport, and it's a little bit hard to do. I was excited. Now I put the suit on, I'm a little nervous, but we're going to do this. The difficult part is handling stiff flyers, I would say. Some people are a little stiffer than others. It was awesome. I'm glad I did it. 
At first, I thought I couldn't get the hang of it. By the end, I was I thought I was a pro. The air is holding you up. The air is holding you up, so that's amazing. If you can fly here and uh, not fall out, then you're good to go for skydiving. For any other tunnel, you're proficient. As you guys can see, I just went indoor skydiving, and the most important thing I learned is to always relax. For Studio G, I'm Deshola by Logan. If you want more information, check out VegasIndoorSkydiving.com. Now over to you, Sally-Ann. Michael Godot is a man of many trades. He's a comedy juggler who worked with Lance Burton for many years. He's an inventor, a drone flying, Emmy-nominated writer who's been part of so many special projects. And here he is. Thank yeah, you for me. joining us today, <laughs> Michael. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Michelle. So, um, like we said, you're a juggler yeah. and you graduated from clown, uh, clown college. Yeah. How does someone do that and then become a writer? <laughs> how, how did you go from one thing to the other? You know, uh, in order to be a successful juggler, uh, in my opinion, you need to have a funny show because people get bored with juggling in about 30 seconds, right? You go, look at that, that was great, let's go do something else. And so I knew I needed jokes. So I started trying to write material that would make juggling more interesting for people to watch it and for more fun for me. The juggling's always been an excuse to be on stage, so that's how I started writing. But the first real break in writing came, I came to, uh, I was living in Las Vegas, I was in the Follies Bergere and then the Lance Burton show for 20 years. Um, and Penn and Teller, who were friends of mine at that time, the juggling community is really small we're all friends um so penn and teller were starting a show called the sin city spectacular which was like a variety show like the old sunny and share show variety acts and uh, uh you know uh, musicians and actors coming on to do songs crazy stuff and uh, they asked all of their las vegas friends to come in for a week and work on this show to talk about ideas at, uh, at the end of the week, I was having the greatest time. We were just making up crazy stuff and trying to build it and doing really fun stuff. At the end of that week, everybody else went home. And I came back and said, you know, I, I don't care if you pay me. I'm staying. That was smart of you. Yeah. And about a week <laughs> later, they went, you know what? We are going to pay you. You can stay with us. And so I worked as a, as a writer and a consultant on that show for 24 episodes. And then later on, when Penn & Teller got their show, and I don't know if we can say this on the air, Penn & Teller bullshit. Bull shit. <laughs> Well, I hope Bullshit. we can okay. say that. Well, well, who knows? <laughs> um, they asked if I would be a writer on the show. And then how did you become the executive producer? <laughs> well, the first episode, we're starting taping. The executives from Showtime are there because they're worried. The show is called Bullshit, and we are going to be jerks. And, uh, and they go to the script, and they look at it, and they go, hmm, well, I don't know that we can say this. And they go to Penn and & Teller and say, we don't know if we can say this. And they say, well, you'll have to go talk to Goudot. They hadn't told me this, but now I'm the middleman. They say, go talk to Goudot. The Showtime executive says, well, we're not just going to talk to the writer about this. And they said, oh, no, no. He's also the executive producer. Oh. <laughs> and I went, I am? <laughs> and so that meant that my job was now to argue with Showtime about what was appropriate or inappropriate for the show. So that's how I became from writer to executive producer was just a... A little fluke you, thing. You stand you in front of them so they don't coming. yell at us. <laughs> did you enjoy being the executive producer? I or did. Or more into the writing of it? Well, uh, the executive producer, a lot of executive producer job is people calling you and saying, what color should the Valentine be? So, well, it's Valentine. It should be red, right? <laughs> I mean, so it's a lot of that kind of thing. So the, the writer was a better job for me, a more enjoyable job. I spent my time with Penn & Teller working specifically on routines for the show. Mm -hmm. which is great fun because they're great guys and funny guys and uh, very, very clear of vision. They know what they want in a show. It, it, they're great to work with. And now you also co-host a show um, with uh, yeah. Penn. I do a weekly podcast now with Penn called Penn Sunday School. How did that come to be? Uh, Penn and I did a, uh, a daily show, uh, a daily radio show for about two years. And, uh, and uh, uh, because of Penn's schedule, we, we couldn't continue to do it every day. Penn is the busiest guy in the world. You know, Penn and Teller work on a million projects all the time. Um, and so Penn wanted to cut that down to one day a week. And so we decided to start our own Sunday school. And do you still do a lot of the writing for that? Uh, it, well, it's like this show. We chat. You yeah. know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I, I sit down and we talk about what the topics are going to be for the week and then just go. Mm -hmm. That's the great part about a podcast. You know, it's nice. Yeah. Go. <laughs> so then what, um, what are some new projects that you're working on right now? I actually have uh, uh, two shows that I'm writing on 
for the Las Vegas Strip that'll open up in in uh, January, and I don't know the rules on talking about them or not. But uh, <laughs> so on. I'm doing that, and I uh, <laughs> I did uh, uh, the first season of Outdoor Nevada, a PBS show mm -hmm. here, and that just finished. Um, so it's, uh, still pretty busy. Can you talk about your book? Oh well, the book is done. Yes, the book is yeah. done and sold okay, out. Good. We can talk about that all you want. <laughs> all <laughs> right, tell the, us about that. I wrote the book on pancakes. <laughs> the book. The book on pancakes, and it's uh, it's not a book of recipes. It's a book of how to make pancake art. Mm -hmm. When my kids were little, I was always doing things to try to get them to eat, and so I want I wanted to make a pancake that was my son's initial. His name is Joseph. I wanted to make a J, and I messed around trying to make a J with different like. Uh, spoons and stuff, and it didn't really work. And I discovered that if I put the ketchup, the uh, ketchup, the um, <laughs> oh, that's a new way. For yeah, thing ooh, those pancakes. are not good pancakes. <laughs> if I put the batter into an empty ketchup bottle, mm -hmm. a squeeze bottle, I could control it. And so I was able to write his name. And w when I wrote out his name, you have to write up uh, backwards first off, and then when you flip it over, it, you know, it, 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 it's my son's name, and he loved that, and and started eating the pancakes. Um, but he was also a train nut, and so I thought, how can I draw a train? And I discovered that if you put uh, a couple of drops of pancake batter onto the griddle and wait a minute and then put some more, when you flip it, they're different colors. Oh. You know, duh. The, yeah. the part that was on longer is darker. And so I started timing things out. So I was able to actually draw a train that didn't look like a train until you flipped it over. And then you went, whoa, it's a train. <laughs> yeah. And, and I started getting more and more complex until I did... Uh, I think the most complicated version of that I've done was Edvard Munch's The Scream. Mm -hmm. You know, the painting of the uh, abstract painting of the guy screaming. Yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Like that. Exactly that. <laughs> I made that in pancakes. <laughs> um, and then I started adding food coloring to try different things. And mm -hmm. I would do, uh, like, I have a taco platter. If you go to uh, uh, extremepancakes.com, you can see pictures of some of my pancakes. Um, but the cool part was that uh, uh, I, I, I wrote the book. Uh, Barnes & Noble bought it, sold out in a few months. Um, but then real artists saw what I had done to draw pancake pictures, and people mm -hmm. have gone wild with it. And it, it's beautiful now. I mean, there are people doing amazing photorealism pancakes. There's an electric pancake printer now. Who would expect it, right? Who knew? And it all, it's all based on just the ketchup bottle technology that I came up with so long ago which is just really awesome. exciting. We're running out of time, but I want, to, I, I want you to um, just very quickly before we go, you've done so many things. Is there mm -hmm. any advice Thanks. you would want to give to students or young people um, to follow their dreams or who want to become writers? Uh, you know what? It's, it's, uh, I, I usually tell this to magicians or jugglers. Find a place to do as many shows as you can. And so if you wanted to be a juggler, I would say go out on the strip in Las Vegas and start doing shows. There's no replacement for doing a thousand shows. Just put and the same thing's there. true of writing. Just sit down and write. Just write as many things as you can. Put them anywhere that you can. It's all about repetition. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Goodell. <laughs> Mr. Goodell. appreciate it. So formal. <laughs> Michael! We're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. We have plenty of stories for mm. uh, you from student resources to motocross. Stick around. There's more Studio G coming your way. We are member supported. KUNV 91.5, The Source. Here's why you should become a member. Become a part of the public radio family while keeping jazz alive in Southern Nevada. Every member receives a discount card to businesses and restaurants around the valley, along with a premium of KUNV branded items. Exclusive access to KUNV ticket giveaways for concerts and events. And private members-only events with prominent musicians such as Paul Taylor, Vincent Ngala, and many more. We are 91.5 The Source. And that source is you. So become a member today. I really enjoy doing my show. I love all types of rock, and that's why th I'm doing Rock Through the Decades. We play the 50s all the way to today's rock music or rock bands. I want them to get the appreciation of how much rock has changed over the years and how it's still really great. You can never kill rock. I mean, rock is like the way to be, the way to go. The name of my show is Rock Through the Decades, and I am 
Rock and Gemini. You can listen to this on the Rebel HD2 network. For the fourth straight year, the Red Bull GRC season will finish in our city. A.D. Vargas with the story. Seven cities and 11 races, and it all comes down to Las Vegas. For the fourth straight year, our city will wrap up the Red Bull Global Rallycross season. Yesterday, I got to see firsthand just how fast these cars really are. And I got the opportunity to speak with Columbia's first Red Bull Global Rallycross driver. I feel really awesome, uh, really good. I have a different mentality going into this race since it's Vegas, it's the last one. Uh, this is where the championship ends, so I'm willing to give it everything that I got. At 19 years old, Alejandro Fernandez gets to race with people he looked up to his whole life. You know, I look, I, there's all these other drivers and other action sports figures in the series that I really looked up to since I was young, so it's, it's really amazing to be able to share this experience with them as well. The season finale features an all-new track design located at the Village Lot on the Strip. The track looks really cool, really fast. It has all aspects that you would want, fast corners, slow technical corners. The jump and the dirt seems really fluid and really awesome. I can't wait to get on track. Whether you like football, basketball, or baseball, nothing gets the adrenaline rushing quite like a race car. And this is how you get from 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds. With enhanced engineering and safety features, these powerful cars produce 600 horsepower. The end of the Red Bull Global Rally Cross Series will be this afternoon. Reporting for Studio G, Eddie Vargas. If you're interested in attending this event, the gates will open today at 3.30 in front of the Village Lot at the Luxor. So what did you think of the show today? Can I just say that all the pancake talk was like my favorite? <laughs> no, honestly, I'm obsessed with pancakes. Really? Yeah, so when he was talking about like all the, like making like all these pictures and stuff with the pancakes. If you could put anything, what's your perfect pancake picture? My perfect pancake picture would be, um, oh, I don't, have you ever seen um, Norbit before? No, no, why? Well, there's a character named Rasputia. Oh my god. And she's my favorite character ever, all and right. I have a picture of her. So I would like a picture of her for my pancake. What about you? Um, Probably someone like Chad Michael Murray or something oh, like okay. that. I mean, oh. that'd be a great pancake. Of course you choose that. No. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys for watching today. I'm Deshola Balogan. And I'm Sarah Shelton. Have a great day, Las Vegas. I think that was really good.